In this video, we're gonna take a look at how you can configure Pi-hole on a Synology NAS. Now, Pi-hole is a network-wide ad blocker, and basically the way that it works is it will automatically filter requests and block specific ad domains based on actual DNS resolution. So that sounds really complicated, but think of it like DNS requests go in, and while all of them went in, not all of them come out. That's the easiest way to think about it. So setting it up on a Synology NAS is very straightforward, and we're gonna take a look at that in a second. But before we get to that point, I have written instructions that you're gonna to have to follow along with because I have a Docker Compose file that you're gonna use, which will basically configure the entire thing. So we're gonna jump right into it, and the first thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna to have to actually SSH into our Synology NAS. So this is the most difficult part, but bear with me here, it'll make a little bit more sense in a second. So if you open up the control panel, what we're gonna do is actually enable SSH. So you can click here into terminal and then we're gonna enable SSH and we can disable this when we're done. But after you apply it and accept this, what we're gonna to have to do is SSH in. The easiest way to do it is by utilizing the terminal. So when you launch the terminal from the start menu, if you're using Windows, it'll say PowerShell. Don't worry about it, it's the same thing. But what we're gonna do is actually log into the IP address of our NAS with our username. So it'll be SSH username at, and then the IP address of your NAS. After that, you'll have to enter in your password and we are officially connected to our NAS using SSH. So I'm gonna clear out this window. And the first thing that we have to do is actually get the interface name, which we're gonna use for a Mac VLAN network interface. So all you have to do is type in this ifconfig command, and this will make a little bit more sense in a second. So you're gonna see a long list of things. Don't get intimidated. Uh, what we're looking for is the IP address of our NAS. It's only gonna exist once. So for me, I'm on a test NAS with a test network right now. So this is the IP address of the NAS and this is the interface name. So in that Mac VLAN network interface, I'm gonna have to use this specific name here. Now for you, it might be different. It might be E0. E0 is a pretty common one. Uh, it really depends on your NAS's configuration, but the important point is find the IP address and then note down this interface name because we're gonna need it for the next step. So the next step is gonna be actually creating our Mac VLAN network interface. So in order to do that, you basically just have to run a individual command. And I have this command in the written instructions so you can copy and paste it right from there. But what you're gonna see is we're gonna talk through a few different things here. So in this parent section, this is where, after this equal sign, this is where you're gonna to wanna to enter in that interface name. After that, we're going to actually have to substitute our subnet. If you aren't sure what your subnet is, when you find the IP address of your NAS, the first three digits here, that's gonna be your subnet. So you're gonna type that in here, and then it's gonna be .0 forward slash 24. At that point, then you're gonna to have to type in your gateway. Now, this is going to be unique to me. I'm on a weird ISP router here, uh, but the gateway address is actually .254. Normally, this is .1. If you aren't sure what your gateway address is, take the first three digits of this IP address here, do uh, .1, so it'll end in .1. So for me, 192.168.254.1 type that into a web browser, and if you get your router, that is your gateway. So for most people, it's gonna be dot one. For me, you can kind of ignore that. Then this IP range here, this is gonna be the IP address of the Mac VLAN network interface that we actually are using for Pi-hole. Now the Mac VLAN network interface we are using is because there are port conflicts. So with DSM, by default, port 80 is a port conflict and port 53 might be a conflict if you're using Synology's DNS server. This avoids all of that. So what we're basically doing is setting up a separate IP address that will only be used for Pi-hole, and that's what this command is doing. And this right here is the IP address that you'll actually be using for it. After that, everything else can stay as default. PH network, this is just the name of the network. So after you press enter, you're gonna to have to type in your password but then you should see a long string of numbers here, and that will signify that the Mac VLAN network interface is uh, created, and then you can close out of this because we are done. If you would like to, you can disable SSH because we are now done with that. So we now have to move on to the configuration of the Pi-hole container. So what we're gonna do is open up File Station, navigate to the Docker folder, and then we're gonna create three total folders. The first is gonna be called Pi-hole, 
So you're gonna double click into that and then you're gonna create two subfolders inside of that, one called dnsmask.d and the other called pihole. This is the only thing you have to do. We will then utilize these folders from our Docker Compose file, which we'll take a look at in a second. So now that that is done, we are going to open up Container Manager and what we're gonna do is quickly look at the network and what you're gonna see is the Mac VLAN network interface is here. So there's nothing you have to do, I just wanted to show you that. But what we're gonna do is open up this project tab, select create, and then we're gonna give our container a name. And then what we're gonna do is just select that top level folder. And this is where our Docker Compose file is going to be. So rather than uploading a Docker Compose file, we are going to create a new Docker Compose file. And what you can do is paste in the Docker Compose file from the written instructions I have and we'll quickly talk through some of this. So PyHole, that's just the name of the container. These are the ports that PyHole will be using. These are the networks that PyHole will be using. So PH Network, this is the Mac VLAN network interface. PH Bridge, we'll talk about in a second here. The time zone, you can change this time zone to be whatever time zone you're in. And then the web password, this is the password you're gonna to use to access the web interface for PyHole, so you can change this if you'd like. The only other thing I wanna quickly talk through is these paths right here. So these paths are on your Synology NAS. So this is the folder basically that we created. We went into the Docker folder, we created a subfolder named PyHole. Inside of that, we created a subfolder named PyHole and a subfolder named dnsmask.d, same path. The only thing you might have to change is the volume number. If you aren't sure what volume your Docker container is created on, you can open up the control panel, go to shared folder and look for this uh, volume. If you're using something other than one, you have to come in here and modify this number one to be whatever that number is. Other than that, the only thing I wanna talk through is this PyHole bridge. So by default, the PyHole Mac VLAN network interface we're using actually can't communicate with the NAS. So the NAS can't communicate with the Mac VLAN network interface at all. If you try and use it as the DNS server, it's not gonna work. So we have to create a bridge network interface. Now this bridge network interface will only be used for the NAS to communicate with the container. We'll take a look in a little bit to show you an example of how this works. But the idea is that we're gonna go in and create this PyHole bridge and it's gonna be accessible through the NAS at this IP address, 192.168.10.2. You will only use this IP address to communicate with the container. So for example, if you're using OpenVPN on your NAS, you're hosting it on your NAS, and you wanna use your PyHole container as the DNS server, you would obviously have to modify the configuration file for OpenVPN, but rather than using the Mac VLAN IP, you are going to use this IP address right here. So you really are only utilizing this for NAS to container communication. We will take a look at that. The final thing is this PyHole network. This is just stating that we already created it. It was created externally, so we are good. After that, you can go through and you can actually create the container. And what it's gonna do is it's going to slowly start to pull everything down. It might have to download the actual container, but as soon as it does, it is going to start and you're gonna see that the container is started. We're green here and we are green here. In this network tab, you're gonna see that a new uh, network was created and that's the PyHole bridge and everything looks good here. You can see it's connected to one container and that is PyHole. So at this point, we have everything basically set up. I just wanna talk through how we're gonna use this. So what you have to do is go to the IP address of the Mac VLAN network interface forward slash admin, and when you get there, you will get brought to the login page. So if you log in with the password that you specified in the Docker Compose file, you will be brought to PyHole. Now PyHole is configured, but we're not using it as our DNS server. So what I wanna show you is inside of this control panel here, I'm just gonna go to network and I'm gonna manually configure a DNS server. And what I wanna do is I wanna use that Mac VLAN network interface's IP address. And what you're gonna see is as soon as I apply these settings, if I open up the package center, if we open up any of these packages that are not installed, you're gonna see that it's not actually gonna work. If you try and install it, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna be able to actually download it because those DNS queries are not actually working because the NAS cannot communicate with the container. But if we come in here 
and we modify this to be our bridge network's IP address, what you will see is these queries are gonna start to work. And if you go back and you select something different, it's gonna pull right up. And the reason is because the NAS now can communicate with that Mac VLAN network interface. So that's how you would change the NAS to utilize Pi-hole. You don't necessarily have to do that, but that's one way that you could do it. So I'm gonna shift this back real quick. And what we're gonna do, I have a test router here. It's a ISP provided router, nothing fancy. But what I wanna show you is that if we go in and we modify that router to utilize the Pi-hole IP address, as our DNS server, then all of our devices will use that as a DNS server. And then at that point, all the DNS requests will be filtered based on our block list, meaning network-wide ad blocking. So the way that we're actually gonna do that is I'm gonna open up this um, router configuration page. It's very generic and it's gonna be different for everybody, definitely different based on whatever router you're using. But I'm gonna type in the IP address of that Mac VLAN network interface. Because like I said, you're gonna use that IP address for all devices other than your NAS. And as soon as I apply this, if we come back to Pi Hole here, and we go to, let's say Google, what you're gonna see is that queries are starting to come in. And if you check the query log, you will see that we are actually getting a allow request for Google. So that means that as of right now, our network is using Pi-hole as its DNS server. So based on whatever ad list you have configured, this is just the default configuration. You can come in here and modify uh, this list. You can add new lists. There's a bunch online. I don't really have any suggestions for you. You have to check that out on your own, but this default list is very good. Uh, but you can add them here. And the other cool thing is you can actually add local DNS records at this point. So this is a very powerful feature um, because you could basically manage all of your DNS records directly in Pi-hole. There are a bunch of other settings inside of here as well, but for the most part, Pi-hole is configured and it's configured properly. So that is a really quick overview on how Pi-hole works. A few things that are gonna be different. Obviously, your Mac VLAN network interface, you're gonna to have to modify that command to make sure that you're using the correct parameters. You're gonna to have to go in and you're also gonna to have to modify your DNS servers. Now you can modify it on the router like I did, or you can modify it on individual clients. So let's say you only want specific devices to utilize it. You would have to update the actual DNS servers of those devices, but in the written instructions, I have exactly how you can do that. You would just basically type in the IP address there. And other than that, Pi-hole is configured and you are good to go. So I'm hoping this video helped you guys out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.